Hi, I'm Vernon L. Bowling, and welcome to another edition of Focus. As I hope you know, Focus has been on the air for over 40 years. We've been continually to bring you, the African American community, problems, accomplishments, as well as successes that we've had within the African American community. Don't touch that remote. Matter of fact, you can get your pencils or papers together and write down some information that we're going to give to you that's going to be very important that you probably can use later. We'll be right back with more focus after these messages. Here at the Audubon Center, we connect inner city children with nature. Before I came to Audubon, I didn't think about the environment. I see children discovering a universe that wasn't available to them if the center wasn't here. This place teaches you so much. If there wasn't a place like this, I think a lot of people would be missing out. We count on the lottery to help us fund our programs for K through 12 students. We need more friends like the lottery in the community. We're in a time of war. And I'm not talking about Iraq. I'm not talking about the Palestinians. I'm talking about right here in America. There seems to be a war. No, it doesn't seem to be. It's a reality war against our young people. And personally, I am very upset about it. I am in pain about it. But what really is getting to me just as much as the killing, is the perception that people have about our children, which sometimes make, feel, make people feel justified, like they should have gotten shot, they should have gotten killed. Of course, I know better because I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, I'm a sister, I'm an aunt, I'm a friend of young black men, and I know who they are in their souls, regardless to what their socioeconomic position may be. I'd like to introduce you to three young men that hopefully should shift the perception of our young men. These young men are dedicating their life to us, to our communities, to our people, to people as a whole. And I would like for you to meet them so you can kind of get a little inside view of what's on the minds of our youth. We have today Israel Trailer, Kenyatta, and Enlil Bay. And they are members of United People's Party of Self Defense. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Well, thank you kindly. Thank, thank you, thank you for taking the time, because I know that y'all are out there being busy doing a myriad of things, but I know that y'all realize the importance of people hearing your voice. So first, I'd like to kind of get an idea of what is the People's Party, or the United People's Party of Self-Defense. What is, what is that all about? Who started it? Um, why? And why did you get on board with it? And I think that I'm going to go with my educator here. I'll be fine. Well, United People's Party, we are a group of black men and women in the community of Phoenix, Arizona, looking to uplift our community, bring us together. As we all know, being separated is our main downfall. So if we can come together as a people, we feel that we could actually uplift our people and get out of this slump that we're in. So that's our main focus, okay. is bring our people together, one mind, multiple bodies, and uplift the community. That sounds pretty wonderful to me. Israel, <laughs> how did you get involved in this? Me, honestly, being, being young, I tend to see a lot, a lot of what young people do, and I just never really agreed with it, you know? And I've always felt some sort of attraction to the black power thing since, since, at, a, since at a young age. And my father, Saladin, he, he influenced me to not, not, not made me or so much as put his image in my head, but he influenced me to, to do what I've always believed in, which is fight for our people's freedom. And so he was a great model. Yes, as you can see. Yeah, and oh my God, you have a father. <laughs> <laughs> a 
I mean, because that's another myth another that's myth. out there, no. that black children or black boys don't grow up with their fathers. Well, obviously, that's not true. And fortunately, we'll get to hear from your father later because he's here. Now, what, what about you, Kenyatta, with the warrior name? What, how did you get involved in this? Well, the way I got involved was uh, I came out of a pretty much a 14 year career. And after doing that, I- A 14 year career is what I think that the world needs to hear uh, this. Fuel specialist, um, also known as POL for the US Air Force. Okay. And um, after my separation, I wasn't able to gain employment. So with, I, I, if you want to call it my, my massive knowledge in a certain field for so long, and I wasn't able to either get a get hired in that field or get employment in another field because technically I did not have that civilian experience, uh, you know, for, for lack of a better term. Um, when the idea was brought to me, it just made me think about how many people who may not have either the education or uh, a, a extensive background doing something technical like that and they can't get employed. Now your title or your your role in the in the um, in the party is militant structure. Yes. What does that mean? Um, for the most part, I I help with the the military aspect of it, whether it be uh, ranking and, and the, the structuring, so that the people who don't know anything about chain of commands or uh, you know respect for your peers or something like that, um, I, I bring that that aspect to it and, and lay it out. Obviously, since I had that experience, I kind of know a little bit more about it than what somebody may think. Mm -hmm. I've actually had that experience to actually diagram that out for everyone. And I guess with a 13 year career in the Air Force, you would have that experience. <laughs> yes. uh, now, um, um, in, in Leo, you are the Education and Brigadier General. Yes. Now, of course, um, the titles you were able to take a look at exactly what the skill levels were, what the roles these young folks are playing, and we're able to give them titles based on that, am yes. I correct? So as a Brigadier General and as an educator, what role do you play? Uh, let's go with educator first. Uh, educator for me first is teaching our youth and even our older people in the community about their parents. Yeah, yeah, watch, watch it now. You are very good. There are some, you know, some people from, let's say, my mother's generation, mm -hmm. who are so stuck on what they were taught growing up that they have no idea what the truth is, how we were kings and queens before slavery. So that's my thing. Life before slavery. If we can figure out who we were then, mm -hmm. it would give us something else to grasp onto now to bring us up. As you know, Marcus Garvey said, if you don't know your past. You don't know your future mm -hmm. and you will never be anything so if we, they took our past so my thing here is to bring that back into light and also beyond that once i get that part taken care of and i've taught the masses on what our past was and who we were and what we should be i then move into the situation that we're in today with staying alive you know knowing what mm -hmm. to do when the police stop you how to react how not to react don't be the next I don't even want to use the names of these brothers who came out, but you know, don't be that next one. Mm -hmm. So my thing is know your past, know your future, and know the do's and don'ts of the streets. And basically just, I want to keep my people alive and get us back to where we should be at a godly status. I like that. Israel, now you are the recruiter of the youth. How, how do you get them? And what is the age um, range of this program? You no, know, that's a good question, honestly. Me, um, I, I would like to some. I would like to 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 go at them in an the aspect that they will understand. You know, they're young, they're hard headed. You know, the music nowadays is a big influence. You got these rappers who ain't no help. You know what I'm saying? So, I would like to. I try to reach for them so that they can understand. They they need to understand somebody rather than someone. Hey, do this, do that. You know, and that's where I'm more trying to get at. Like, and for the most part, it's like when you when you with youth, you got to stay on it. You know, and you really got to stay on it because it, it doesn't take that long for them to get distracted. Life is nowadays a big distraction for you. What are the age ranges? Our age ranges, really, I don't, I would like to say we don't really have none because you can start the younger the better, you know, That's but for true. the most part, it would be at least 12. 
At least okay. 12. 12 years old. Right. Okay, I'm going to get into the actual structure of the program with your father because he's better able to tell us exactly what happens. What is? What does your program look like? Okay. What does your organization look like? Um, and we don't really have a lot of time left. But um, what is your view? Just very briefly, I want each of you all to tell me what your perspective is on what's happening in um, Baltimore now and Ferguson, et cetera, and now throughout the country. What, what is your what is your view on this? My view is that it's wrong, 100%. This is something that we've been going through since before my grandparents. So you're talking about the killing the is killing, wrong. The killing is wrong. Okay. I mean, starting with, you know, hanging us from trees, it's, and all of a sudden it was swept under the rug. It was okay to be, let me rephrase that. Let's say certain people started saying it was okay to move away from that. And we've seen that happen. We've seen less violence, but now all of a sudden that we're moving into this new millennium and certain people's time frame is coming to an end, I see there's a certain rush to remove a certain race from this planet. Mm -hmm. And it's, they're rushing at it really, really fast. So you're seeing this almost as genocide? Actually, I do see it as 100% genocide. They're, we're, the young black male is an endangered species. Mm -hmm. And actually, in the words of Chris Rock, we're not even an endangered species because they don't even have us federally protected. Well, hello. <laughs> All right, no, that's true. <laughs> so, I mean, from there, only thing we can do is stand up, be strong, fight, do what we got to do, and remain. I mean, if it takes violence, hey, so be it. Okay, soldier. So we know we can't fight the Air Force, the Navy, the Marines, no. the National Guard, the... We can't fight them. Right. We don't have the, the, the power, right. the, the arsenal to go up against them. So um, I, would, I would think that when you say if we have violence, so be it, you know. The um, uprising of the people, I mean, it's happened in multiple different countries so right. far over the past few years. Countries have uprisen, overthrown the government and taken it back. We're the last one to do so, so it's time for us to do it. Um, hello, all righty. Soldier. Um, I would say, uh, and actually I like your transition because uh, I was speaking with somebody about that the other day and trying to look at it from a different side because everybody already know what's going on, the, the, the surface of it. But looking at it from a different side, uh, take the military for example, they send the guys to Iraq, Afghanistan, wherever it may be. And at some point in time, they bring them home. So, you know, now they got PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder and all type of other little things that's going on. They, they want to get these people some downtime, some time to rest. I look at it like, uh, you take these 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 cops, sheriffs, or you know whatever uh, legal term they might go by, and basically they're in the war zone every day. And not saying what they're doing is right, but I think just like we may get that downtime, sometimes they need to get that downtime because that's like a person staying in a tense state at all time, mm. which can contribute to the actions that they're performing if they're never getting any rest from the stuff that they're seeing every day too, well, on a different aspect. That's a very, very high perspective of, on that, yeah. So, um, so okay, we'll talk, jeez, oh, I wish we had more time. Do we have time at least to find out, Israel, what is your perspective on that? <laughs> we could really go deep into that one, right. you know, because I, 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 I can see that. But at the same time, what about the mentality before you even get tired right. to, of, of, of going after these young folks because you think that they're dangerous by, just by virtue of the color of their skin. Exactly. So you are afraid of them just because they're black. And so they're, they're not even getting the benefit of the doubt. They're just mm -hmm. automatically dangerous. They're just automatically uh, are a threat to them. And so let's kill them. Let's, not, let's go straight to the chase. Let's be the judge, what, with the judge, the jury, and the executioner. Yes. Right then and there within that 30 seconds. Yes. So eh, downtime, I totally agree with. But at the same time, there are some folks who are new on the job, honey, and, yeah. and they still, there may be those, or some of the ones who are committing most of the atrocities, when they mm -hmm. aren't that tired. But, right. I mean, my views on it, I'm going to honestly, I'm going to be honest, and I'm going to say like this, like, our youth is, they're more crazier. They're, they're ready, they just ready to, to throw their life away. And honestly, what these policemen are doing, like, I'm not gonna say it's a good thing, but they're pushing, but they're, what they're doing, we're forcing us to come together. If we won't come together, they're forcing us to come okay, together. Okay, so you're saying it's a good thing what they're doing because they're, they are making us see, okay, we acting crazy. Right. We need to pull together, which is kind of what you all have done. Right. And what we also saw evidence of that with the Bloods and the Crips in Baltimore, right. saying, hey, you know, look what we've done. 
we need to come together and bring some peace to this area. So that's pretty much what you're saying. Yeah, I also like the aspect is of the the Bloods and the Crips is they came together without having to feed into that stereotype of oh they just want to come together to kill some cops. Right, and you know they, they dismiss that myth. Right, right, right. It's, it's straight myth. It's just another myth thrown on a black on the black people as a race to make them look worse. Than well, not only make them look, but give you an excuse to shoot them down in the street. There we go. Because if you're thinking that oh my God they're coming after us and your whole thing is about protect myself, which is understandable, yes. well then. That's going to happen. That's what's, But I'm glad that they clarified that. I can't believe, Tony, that we are ready for a break. Um, but we will come back, and we'll come back with Saladin, the, the gentleman who started this organization. And um, and who knows, maybe we'll come back again and talk to these young, young brothers uh, at another time. But come back. Here at the Audubon Center, we connect inner city children with nature. Before I came to Audubon, I didn't think about the environment. I see children discovering a universe that wasn't available to them if the center wasn't here. This place teaches you so much. If there wasn't a place like this, I think a lot of people would be missing out. We count on the lottery to help us fund our programs for K through 12 students. We need more friends like the lottery in the community. Thanks for coming back. I'm Fatima Halim, and you are watching Focus. And we have been talking to some young men from the United People's Party of Self-Defense, uh, a local organization who are who is dedicated to uplifting the African American community. And with me is Israel. He came back, and Enlil is back with us. But now we have a new person here. We have the general, That's General right. Saladin, and. You are the founder of That's this organization. Right. Can you tell us what what motivated you to do this? And yeah, yeah. What really, um, you know, well, what really got me motivated, got me started on wanting to start something like this, is because I seen, you know, through my lifetime, I done been through a lot of hardship, and I done seen all the, you know, good and bad, all the foul and unfoul things that happened. And, you know, through some of the teachings that I have received from, you know, various brothers, I don't too much like getting into religions because that's, you know, the biggest thing that separates us, I feel, as a people. But, you know, from the things that I have learned and stuff like that and a lot of the things I have seen, especially on the recent slaughters, you know, of all these innocent people, and I feel that, you know, by us marching, stomping, clapping and singing is just not going to do what we need as a people. Yeah. So how long have you all been an organization? You know, some sister, that's a good one too, because uh, off and on, something like this came to me truthfully about almost 20 years ago. Mm. I wrote papers on it, you know, and everything, you know, put up, you know, laws and everything on it. But uh, I guess then wasn't, you know, the proper time to do what had to be done, so it kind of died out. Then another, what, 15 years ago, it came back again, and me and some brothers got together, and it just didn't seem like, you know what I'm saying, it didn't present itself properly, so I believe it just wasn't that time. Mm -hmm. And then recently, within the last, what, brother, about almost a year now, it just seemed like there was nothing else to do but that, you know? It seemed like that was the most important thing to do at so, the time. So how many people at this point do you have in your organization? <laughs> I'm going to say like this, sister, because I'm not, I'm just not one of them per you know, type of person where I trust too many people. Not Hello. saying I don't trust no, you. No, I ain't mad at you. So. It's, uh, it ain't just me you're talking to. So I, yeah. I'm okay. So, so you have, a, you have, it's, it's. Yeah, it's, I say like we say on the streets, we got more than five, less than 5,000. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that, that's good. Tell me it, exactly what it is you do. Tell oh, me exactly, because I know we have Brother in, in, in Leo here who said that um, he is the educator yes. uh, and he teaches our history all the way back to Kemet. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking he goes all the way back. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, he said, we don't have a problem with violence. If that's what we got to do, that's what we got to do. Then we have the soldier. Yeah. We had our brother King Yada here who was that's a soldier right. who was actually teaching um, um, yeah, the military, military tactics, yeah, the military needs, tactics so. et cetera. So, and then we have our young brother who's recruiting. Yes. So you have a, a, a nice, and I'm quite sure that there are others that, you know, yes. that are not here because we didn't have the space for them. But what do you do? 
Well, my main thing, I pretty much, you know, in and out of everything, trying to make sure that everybody's on their job, make sure I'm on my job, and uh, help brother with, you know, for education, you know, speaking with people. So I'm kind of like in and out of, you know, a little bit of everything. So what does your program it, you know? look like? What is it? What is it act like? So I have a group of young brothers and I'm going to send you away and a group of young sisters, I'm going to send you away. What are you going to do with them? Well, our idea was to, like brother was saying a little earlier, is to um, try to get the people to start thinking, you know, to start, you know, try to get them to start thinking about, you know, a better way of life, you know what I'm saying, the future of their children, the future of their grandkids and stuff like that, the things that are going on today as far as like I said, our sl us getting slaughtered and the foolish things we do, a lot of times it kind of edge that on. I'm not saying we edge on what the police have been done to, doing to us, but we edge on foolishness amongst each other that causes us to kill each other. So, um, so I guess you have some classes that you that you do um, with the young folks, right? Yeah. So, what what, what a you said that you still had something to say. What is just so burning in you, Israel, that that you wouldn't get off the set? What? You refuse to move. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and then I was like, all right. <laughs> what what just, is it? Like, like, like my brother and Lil said, it's our, one of our biggest problems is unity. And I see that not just outside, but I see that within my family. I see that with them, with those friends, all that, you know. And I'm like, like at a young age, I know I'm sick of it. I know people at, who's my elders are sick of it, too. The nonsense has to stop. You know, it really has to stop. I mean, how far, how many generations do we have to lose until we realize this is not the way of life for us? This is not our way of life. This is true. Yeah. Now, just, just uh, and I'm going to have a question for you as well, um, but you work with gang members. Yes. So tell me about that experience and, and how do they respond? Um, a lot of the uh, brothers that I spoke with that were gang members, they, gave me a very positive response because like I said, at one time I was a gang mem member myself, you know, until I realized what I was doing, who I was doing it to, and what the outcome, you know, of what I was doing ended up at, mm -hmm. which is always no good, you know. But um, like I said, I met with a lot of brothers on the south side, brothers from uh, Hebrew Israelites. You know, I'm always with my number one brothers, Muslims, love them to death. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we got, we got positive, I don't know, <coughs> Outcome from all the brothers. So, so there's you know. like a, a. Can you see yourselves collaborating? I mean, are, are you collaborating? You and uh, and, and the um, the brothers from the nation, um, the Hebrew Israelites, the in the gang members. Um, are are y'all looking at some type of a collaboration? Yeah, what it is because a lot of times when they give things or they got something to say or they you know need extra heads for what you know whatever, we there to support them 100 percent. You know, and like I said, some brothers though. Um, we have a little difficulty with because we always want to separate each other because I believe in this God, you believe in that God, I believe that religion is this way. That's why I say I don't like doing much talking on religion because I think that's the, you know, I think that's the biggest way to set between us as a people, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like I said, sometimes we have a little, what, is y'all a Muslim group, is y'all a Christian group, is y'all a Hebrew Israelite group, and I, you know, Make sure that I let all the brothers know, you know, what you believe as far as your religious beliefs is, is on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All we is, we're a group of brothers that want to see a better life for our people and our children and ourselves at whatever cost. You know, we ain't out here to be, you know, I'm, make sure I explain to everybody, we ain't out here to be tough. We ain't trying to look tough. We ain't trying to act tough. But we are men. We just so happens that you yeah. do look tough. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brother Enlil, mm -hmm. you know, um, Brother Saladin mentioned that he works with gang members and um, and sometimes there's a challenge. Mm -hmm. What challenges do you find uh, working with the young brothers who are who are in the gangs? Sure, I mean, I really wasn't a gangbanger, but I ran with them. I did a lot of dealings with them. I've done a lot of weird stuff in my younger days. So I know where they're coming from, I know what they're doing. And since I can relate to them, I know exactly how to talk to them. I look at it this way when it, I'm with Israel with the youth and with him with the uh, working with the gangbangers, with the youth it's easier to create strong youth than to fix a broken man. With the gangbangers or the gang members, these dudes are soldiers. They're already ready for war. They just need to be reprogrammed to 
use that energy in a positive way. When we're looking at um, brothers, I, I totally agree. I've always seen those brothers who are part of the gangs mm -hmm. as soldiers. They are, mm -hmm. They're ready. They are, they're prepared. They're just misguided. Mm -hmm. they and, um, and they're fighting against one another. Even though you may have the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, National Guard, um, whomever, you have a unified group. Mm -hmm. They all have a goal. Mm -hmm. And that is to protect this mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. And so if, if we can get them in a common mindset, and that is to protect us, then I think that we would really, you know, probably go further, as well as protect our communities. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the challenges, one of the things that you hear a lot of folks say throughout the country in our black communities is that we need to be policing Police ourselves. ourselves. And so I see this as an opportunity to do that, to have some community policing. So I would think that that's part of your yes, definitely. Uh, part of your your your, um, your mission definitely. is to police our own communities and to make sure that those gangbangers are beginning to see themselves, their people, mm -hmm. and their role in our society as as a dif as different than what they're seeing mm -hmm. it as now. Yeah. It, it's it's a lot of work to be done. A lot, a lot. And a I lot. personally think that you all are some of our heroes in our community you. because you're out here, you're doing the work, you are doing what you can, you are creating a a system yeah. of of change mm -hmm. for us. You are starting with our kids, with our children, and um, whatever whatever resources that you have out there in the community that can be helpful to our brothers here. Please make sure you connect with them. You have their information right there um, on, on, on the TV. You can take a look at that. You can text them. You can email them. You can take a look at their website that, they, that they've built that I've seen. Yes. You do whatever that you can to give us a hand. Because here are some brothers who are working with our brothers. So thank you so much for coming. Yes, ma'am. And I, I really hope to see you again. And thank you for joining us for Focus. And we hope to see you again as well. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Focus. And if you'd like to contact us, if there's a topic you'd like to see us present or someone you'd like us to talk to, the information is right up on the screen. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Same station, same time, when Focus continues.